business and industry is a little bit scared right now that they don't have they don't have a workforce. Uh, so they're coming to us saying, "We need your kids." Our business partners are having trouble finding quality employees. Two of them, major employers, are threatening to move if we can't support um, the community with quality employees. This also means for the school district that you lose families, you lose students, and then you lose funding. The biggest change that I've seen over the course of 19 years has been not being able to find the right talent. Um, we have less people. Um, we do have people with skills, but the skills gap is getting wider and wider um, because of technology. I mean, really, technology is driving all of this. You know, as we look at the changes that have occurred in society from like my generation to where the students are at today, when I was in high school or even in grade school, um, you know, the focus was maybe on one sport at a time. We didn't have multiple options. We had a couple of things in the summertime, but most of us found a job. Even in high school, we were working part-time. Maybe it was on a family farm or maybe it was on a local business, but we worked and we had the experience of the opportunity to work for someone, to know what those expectations are about. Out. The majority of our students have not experienced work, at working for someone, what that environment is like, until they actually graduate from college or they, they get out of high school, either one. And so the problem being, when you don't know what that environment is like and you don't know what the expectations are, you don't know how to react and you don't know, so you walk into your first full-time job and it really is your first experience. And that has become problematic for a lot of employers who, who have a, a higher expectation. Career education in Nebraska, as we operate from the Nebraska Department of Education, is the combination of career technical education, which are those technical courses, career guidance, where we start at the elementary school and we help students understand the breadth of career opportunities and we help them with ass assessments to determine what their skill sets, what their passion, what they're good at. And then we combine that with a solid academic foundation because the basics of reading and writing and math are, are absolutely essential for students to be successful. That whole package becomes career education. Along with that though is we need real world experiences. The kinds of experiences that we can get from our career student organizations, FFA, Skills USA, um, Health Professionals of America, but it also works when we have workplace learning. In other words, um, the opportunity to do job shadow, the opportunity to have internships, to really get into a, a place of business or a place of work and understand what that's all about and be able to uh, experience the culture, experience the expectations that they will have so that they can make good career choices based on that information. Most people flash back to what they knew as vocational education when they were in high school. And if they walked into a classroom today and they saw robotics, and they saw DNA extraction, and they saw the health science curriculum, the, the, all of the, the nature of what we do today in career education, I think they'd be amazed. Zoo Academy is this wonderful partnership that we have, and it's a, a high school on zoo grounds where students come here and complete their last two years of high school, their junior and senior year. They get to interact and be part of the zoo. They get to work in the different animal areas. They get to be part of our strategic planning. I love messing with animals, and I was like, hey, this provides a great opportunity for me to learn more about what I want to do in life. So I figured that I'd sign up for it because I heard some other students talk about it, and they said it was a great experience. So I figured that I'd do it, and it turned out to be a great idea. 
The structure of the Zoo Academy is students are able to take their core curriculum here, but also have the benefit of expanding that curriculum and application of the current interests that they're looking to explore. For instance, we have students here at the Zoo Academy who are interested in going into veterinarian, into diet, into being a zoo, a zoo keeper. With those opportunities, they can work side by side with professionals in the field and use the skills they've learned in their classes and apply them to the field. Because of our proximity to not only Nebraska Public Power District and the nuclear plant here at Brownville and Omaha Public Power District's coal-fired plant in Nebraska City, they thought, we have a mecca of energy right here, so why not look at what we could do from an energy perspective and use it as an opportunity for kids that maybe don't want to go to a four-year school, that they get some knowledge and experience of what jobs in the energy field is like. And so we've partnered with Omaha Public Power District, Nebraska Public Power District, and the schools in the area to bring about an Energy Career Academy. It's crazy. I'm really happy that we have this class. You know, kids can learn so much because it's problem solving skills and it's gonna help me for the rest of my life, especially with the career that I wanna pursue. We talk about the business of energy. We talk about the safety of energy. And then a key component is we talk about the careers. I am considering a career in the energy field. I am going to join the Navy after I graduate and then I am going to pursue a job possibly as a station manager out at a nuclear plant. Grand Island, they're starting a program that's called uh, Career Pathways, where those kids will have the opportunity to go to a separate location and their total curriculum will be about you know, their chosen field. The community college, our business partners, chamber, economic development, gave us some real reasonable, doable, um, this is what you need in business. We then identified the need for the community was manufacturing. Uh, so we have a manufacturing program, our construction technical, automotive, which includes transportation and logistics, and then our information systems business, marketing, accounting, hospitality, tourism, culinary arts, health sciences, and education. And then drafting, um, and our business partners told us that drafting and engineering needs to get out on the floor. So our um, drafting program will be integrated into our construction technical and into our manufacturing. Students, when they step out of high school, they have the opportunity to go on for an associate's degree or on for a four-year degree. It is giving kids the skills to be productive members of society with a job. If you're going to live in this area, if you're not a teacher or work for local and state governments, you know, you about have to be an entrepreneur. I mean, I've been an entrepreneur all my life, and uh, we make vinegar. They haven't had a grocery store in Cody, Nebraska for 10, 15 years, and so we'd have to drive to like Valentine to get our groceries. And for ranchers who live 65 miles and 70 miles from the closest grocery store, we're trying to get a, a student-run entrepreneurship center and grocery store. Our school in our town is kind of starting to dwindle down and we're looking for any way to keep things reviving. And that's the first thing that we thought needed to be done. So we started with this uh, grocery store. This is what this town needed. The students will help uh, the store in merchandising and marketing and I know they're going to be behind the cashier and they're going to be stocking shelves and they're going to learn a lot about what it takes to keep something rolling. I'm, I'm very heartened that, that uh, the entrepreneurial curriculum is being developed and that the classroom is going to be in the grocery store and it's going to be an emphasis now of the school and the community to mentor young people in entrepreneurship. Being an entrepreneur myself, I think that gives them a reason to, to learn the other subjects, um, to be able to write a good paper, to be able to figure your uh, finances. It all comes together. Those other classes actually help out their entrepreneurship. Schoolhouse Graphic Products is a company that does vinyl for people around the country. They experience what adults experience in a real world. It's not just a class that they go out to and go goof off and chit chat with their friends, but they're expected to produce something. We talk with, with people in business, you know, what do you do, what do you guys want, you know, how can we help prepare these kids better, and, and going out into industry, uh, there's just such a 
uh, an overwhelming uh, wealth of information out there. And, and the, these are the things we just love to introduce and teach the kids and expose the kids to it because that's what we're looking for. We have different spots in our company where there's layout and design, production, and printing. And we have heads of each one. And I'm the manager of layout and design. To go into managerial position, she's had to learn that now I'm responsible. Now I'm responsible to make sure that this gets done, to make sure people that I'm in charge of are getting things done when they're supposed to. I think the biggest thing that I've learned is that you have to give your all. Good isn't good enough if it can be better, and better isn't good enough if it can be your best. Skills USA is a partnership of students, teachers, and industry leaders to ensure America has a skilled workforce. At NMC, we have partnered with um, a number of, of organizations outside, but I think a really good success story is Skills USA. And you know, from that program, our applicant um, pool have, has increased 300 percent. Once a year, we have students from all across the state of Nebraska come in and compete using skills that they're learning in their industrial technology classroom, and it gives them an opportunity to showcase the skills that they have. A lot of our students, this is their football field or their basketball court, it really gives them a chance to showcase what they can do. You know, and some of these kids, you know, like it or not, when they, when they leave high school, that may be all they get. You know, and to have them ready to go into some chosen field is, is just huge. FFA is not just cows, plows, and sows. FFA is all of those things, but it's also soil science, it's food science, it's marketing, it's nursery and landscape, it's floriculture and agriculture education takes in all of those things. My job at the bank is an ag loan officer. Being in the ch FFA chapter here, we learn more hands-on stuff, and so that helped me to understand kind of how the farmers are thinking nowadays and what goes through their head. I was one of the few students who enrolled in FFA with the specific plan of not being in agriculture at all. I had no desire to work on a farm. I didn't want anything to do with cows, but I knew that FFA was gonna have experiences that I wanted and that I needed. We started into a conversation with business and industry. We've heard forever that they, uh, students coming out in lack employability skills, but we didn't have a good definition for what those were. So we called together a group of business and industry individuals and educators and defined that for the state of Nebraska. Auto mechanics and welding, architectural drafting and culinary arts. Adobe Illustrator. Just simple quick books. Adobe Photoshop. Automotive service technology. Electrical wiring. Carpentry and uh, plumbing. And, and masonry. teaching students to think at or above the level of doctors, lawyers, and engineers just because we're giving them a set of criteria and telling them to evaluate the circumstance or scenario. So it wasn't so much about the cows, it wasn't about the sheep, it wasn't about the pigs, it was about the chance to learn how to put these thoughts together in my brain and then be able to tell somebody else how I'm thinking and why I did something. So many times employers say, I need a student that knows how to show up to work on time, knows how to work when they're here, knows how to get along with others, can do some team working. I've learned a lot about uh, hard work and uh, basically leadership. When we're in a group, we need to take charge and delegate responsibilities to other members of the group. Take constructive criticism well. Even my homework, it helps me get my homework done on time just because I'm used to getting stuff done on time out there. 
being able to get along with others. Learn to work with people better because, you know, there's always people you don't necessarily get along with. We are always taught to act with character. You gotta show up and be on time and really work hard. We want them to be dependable. We want the manners. Everything that every employer wants. It helps me um, work on my people skills so I know how to talk to people. And I'm not shy about it anymore. Like it used to be, I was really bad. <laughs> High school isn't necessarily for everybody. Not everybody really maybe likes the whole model of how we run schools. So one of the neat things about Career Academy is it kind of takes that model, takes the public education model, but it also says, okay, here is a course where you can apply this to your everyday life. This is a course that matters to the choices you're making. My 16-year-old son is, is typical. He doesn't really care to get up in the morning and various things like that. Um, by coming down to the grocery store and helping out, he's actually been on a time schedule. And it's been great working with the guys around here because they value uh, the help that he's put into it. And they've given him quite a bit of feedback about this, this is great. And if you come up tomorrow, you know, we'll teach you how to put up the rafters, and it's, um, it's given him a purpose. For the first couple of weeks that we were working over there, there's a young man here in town that uh, helps his dad quite a bit, and uh, he volunteered practically every day, and, and it was 110 degrees and wasn't very much fun, but he was always there. And uh, throughout and working with uh, the contractors that were working there, they learned that he wanted to be a carpenter and that he'd like to be a contractor on his own someday. And so they kind of took him under their wing. And uh, so they taught him how to use a lot of the tools and encouraged him. And he's to the point now where he literally is, is looking for jobs that he can contract on his own. The Career Academy is geared towards kids that like to do the hands-on type stuff. And this gives them an opportunity to try it and see if it's really what they want to do. From a standpoint of giving these kids experiences where they actually get to work with these animals and, and understand it, most of them want to go into, work it, into vet school. I originally wanted to be a veterinarian, however, shadowing here at, in the nutrition lab, I found out that I'd rather be a nutritionist rather than a veterinarian. We've had kids spend thousands of dollars in a college education and then they get out in four years thinking this is not really what I want to do. There are multiple pathways to success. For some students that's, that's going to work after high school because they're not ready for college. For some students it's going right to a four-year college. For some it's a two-year or even just a certificate that is an industry credential. Those types of, of certificates and diplomas help students become more employable and more successful as they pursue their career because not all of them are even interested in getting a four-year degree. They're looking for something that's not just theory-based. They want to get out there and get their hands dirty and they want to be able to get involved right away. Well, I definitely want to do something in a vocation. I'd like to do something along the lines of diesel or welding. It's truly amazing for them to be able to have this experience, decide that maybe this is the career that I want to pursue, pursue that career and work in this area and really have an opportunity to be involved in a job that's a good paying job. Um, yeah, I definitely found something I like doing in, uh, in plumbing, which is kind of weird, but... Uh, they're high demand, they're high wage careers. I'm going into the Ford Asset Program, which is sponsored by Ford Motor Company. It's kind of a learn as you go program, which is really great. You learn one part of automotive and then you go and work on that in the dealership and come back and learn some more. I think skills has really helped me understand how I'm gonna go about doing all that and learning the skills that it takes to go into my field. If a student has a passion for wanting to get into a technical career um, and, and they need to be able to find the right education to prepare them for that career and, and we need to celebrate with them. When they found something that they love to do that gives them joy and they rewards them, they're, they're bound for a successful life. We 
so often want to point fingers at the education system. We want to say, who are these people that are coming out? They're not ready technically. They're not ready um, from an education standpoint. They're not ready from a soft skill standpoint. To me, any systematic change is going to take, and especially today, it's going to take the community. It's going to take business. It's going to take education. It's going to take government. One of the biggest challenges we have in education today is simply the, the gulf that exists between business and industry and the community in many cases and education. We speak different languages. We need to bridge that gulf. We need to come together and uh, invite businesses into the classroom. I wish companies everywhere would feel open and ready to partner with public schools. Uh, we are the entity that provides them with the quality workers. We don't know what they need. We're not business people. Um, we're used to textbooks and curriculum. And when we sit down and really have that open dialogue about what do you need in a worker, they can define it. They can draw the picture for you. And then we just have to design the curriculum to meet that. If we want to start building what I call pipelines, and that doesn't come by just assuming they know who NMC is. That's for us to go out and say, Let's talk about those skills. Let's talk about the things. Here's the categories that we're looking for. Kiwit does an excellent job of walking into a classroom and talking with young people about basic expectations. Here's what employers want. Here's what they need to see. Here's how you get ahead. Here, here's how you get that promotion. These are the kinds of skill sets, the kinds of attributes, the showing up to work on time, the showing the extra energy, going the extra step, the, and the benefits that that will pay. From a student's perspective, you can't replicate that when you have a corporate like Kiwit that walks in and says, if you want to be successful, here's what you need to do. That's real world, that's real time, and it's impactful for those students. When, when you look at the students that are competing, the majority of these students will stay back at their home territory. Uh, they're likely to go back to their home communities and be good workers in those communities. So we're talking about Nebraska's future. We really encourage entrepreneurship with the students so that they can think about, hey, here's some opportunities that I can really let my skills make some money for me. We look at, at the economic development and the economic viability of the state is really uh, a key component of what we're doing. In Nebraska, there are a lot of food processing companies. There are a lot of um, ag marketing companies. And so teaching skills and teaching the science behind food or the skills in um, ag marketing are important for students to have the chance to be competitive in today's job market. We contacted MPPD and OPPD, as well as some local energy um, industries and we said would you like to partner with us in developing this energy academy and they were thrilled to do it because their focus is we have folks that are going to be retiring in the next five years and what we want to do is we want to grow our own and we want to grow our own students that are going to come back and they're going to work in their communities and help support the business and the industries in their communities. A small rural communities are really the backbone, um, especially of our state and our nation. And I feel like keeping those communities alive um, is really important to just, um, just the way we are. And um, it's also building um, that spirit of entrepreneurship. And um, entrepreneurship is really the base of our economy. And, um, and building that will really help communities like Cody to continue to thrive. An average citizen can get involved by, if they're a business owner or an entrepreneur, offer to go to the school and talk with young people and make a connection. Maybe have some students come and job shadow. One of the things that we're really trying hard to do is help kids identify their interests and then base their skills around that. Because if you're really interested and passionate about it, you'll stick with it. And, and so that would be my call to action is just take time to talk to a student about what you do. If it's a parent, the parent needs to walk alongside the student to understand their passion, their skill set, their attributes, their desires. What career do they want to pursue? What's the right education to get them to that career choice? And how together do they lay out that plan so that they can accomplish that goal? 
These kids come in, and as a high school student, they're kind of lost. And I've brought in, a, I've, I've get herds of lost sheep that come in my room every year in August and want to know, hey, what's, what am I going to do if I grow up? <laughs> and yeah, if you grow up, well, it's going to happen. We're all forced to grow up. These are all the directions that you can go. It gives them so many paths, but it helps them find that path. And the biggest thing that I try to tell these kids is, you want to find something that you can hit that alarm clock, shut it off in the morning, and get up and go. And not mind getting up in the morning. I love teaching. I don't mind getting out of bed in the morning. And I go because I know I'm going to have a good day every day. Everybody has something that they love to do. And this just develops the passion. It helps those kids realize this is, this is like the neatest thing I've ever done. Why not do this the rest of my life?